Yeah. Yeah. I, I could see it plain as day. <laughs> I'm like, I can't believe you went on a second date with me. After He's I like, had... what, what do you think got you the second date? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's the Scott and Allie Not For Air podcast. The rules are gone. The shirt is untucked. Here's Scott and Allie. Scott, what do you think is the job occupation that burns the most calories? It ain't the trainer at the gym because they're the ones walking around while I'm actually working out. That is so true. (laughs) I'm sweating my ass off. They're sitting there going, three more. Right? Okay. The job is kind of close to you. Oh, Allie Payne. You must be burning all the calories. You're right there. (laughs) No, but not close to me. (laughs) It's only close to you. Lord knows I'm not burning all the calories. Of the two of us, it's something that is um, something you've done before. Oh, uh, was it when I was a volunteer fireman back a hundred years ago? Yes, really? Yes. yes. And doesn't that make sense? They yeah. carry such heavy equipment. Mm-hmm. They are uh, constantly sweating and hot. Oh my gosh. I will. Okay. I haven't been a volunteer fireman since 1993 when I was still living in Buffalo at home. Oh my God. So it gives you it an 30 idea. 30 years ago. What? How? That was 30 years ago. Well, you cannot say that again. Um, so let me tell you, I remember hot summer days and they they do what they would call a smokehouse drill. Mm. And that's where not you don't go in and see sausages hanging, getting a delicious glaze of smoke. Wouldn't that be awesome? Oh, no. It was like an oven in there. And it was just, oh, it was... And you're in all the gear and everything. That was that was that was tough. I feel back like in it, my skinny days. Now that I know you, that makes sense that you're a firefighter. I could see you with a pager on your belt and a light oh, bar up. and a light bar on your vehicle. Like you are. I did have. I had a little <laughs> blue disc light. I looked like Starsky and Hutch from the seventies. I'd pull one of these where I'd be like. Boop, up on top of the roof of, of the car. Of course you did. And then you plug Arr! it in, you, you plug it into the cigarette lighter and it's like pull <laughs> over. Which they don't even have cigarette lighters anymore. I don't know what you'd plug it into. That's so Yeah, wild. what would you do? I don't know. Is it, maybe it's like solar powered now. Yeah, right. So exactly. Then the light is just like a dim Yes, and I did have a pager. They called it a minute or two. That's what it was back in my day. And okay. Was it on your belt buckle oh God, yeah, or, belt, was, or on your belt? It was yay big. It was bigger than my cell phone. I mean, this is the size of my, my oh Apple. My God. It was bigger than that and thicker than that. If you, I swear to God, if you start wearing your cell phone on your belt, Never. I Never. will I will murder you myself. Never. Not at all. Never. <laughs> I, I cannot and will not. We never, ever would or will date. That is the least attractive thing that you could ever do. Yeah, it's it, it, nothing screams, I think I'm important, like a, a firefighter pager on your belt. Oh, my God, yes, yeah. yes. No uh, disrespect for the, to the firefighters, but y- y'all but are a, bragging a look here. There's a brand. The, that, yes. You know, anytime I meet, well, I'm there's a guy who is, I think he's the chief of one of the fire stations around here. Young guy. Mm -hmm. But he seems like he's like 20 years older than what he is. Well, and here's the thing. If you ever are in the mood to have an argument that has no end in sight and will just go in circles with a whole lot of reasons why to anything, Mm -hmm. bring something up with a firefighter, and a volunteer (laughs) specifically, and they are ready to go. I swear... For people that probably were never on a debate team in high school, Mm -hmm. these are guaranteed winners. I mean, if there's ever a shortage in lawyers that need to make arguments in a case... Firefighters are second best. Get yourself a volunteer firefighter. Bring them in. They'll have a point for anything, and they'll endlessly prove it to the point of nausea. And then you get to go to the volunteer firehouse's bar and drink shitty beer. Oh, my God. That just made me think... And I was a volunteer fireman. I can say that. I... I think of my one of my best girlfriends, her parents, oh, it's her dad and stepmom. They're both firefighters. <laughs> and now that you're that we're just, Did they have uh, their reception at the fire hall? Oh my god, they have everything at the fire hall. Yes, they Literally do. Birthday every, party, fire hall. Um, they also have a gun raffle or something like that. At the fire hall. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there there's kegs and kegs and kegs. I think at it's the a, fire hall. Yes, yes. How about yes. a baby shower? Fire hall. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you know graduation before, party? Fire hall. Yeah. Do you bar mitzvah? Fire Fire hall. Hall. <laughs> Do you know, before I moved here, I 
don't know if I had ever if I had ever been in a fire hall before. Well, let me tell you where I was I a volunteer. Tell you, I definitely was never at a wedding at a fire hall. <laughs> yeah, oh, listen to this. So I was a, where I was a volunteer firefighter way back back in the day up in Buffalo. Shout out to Maine Transit Volunteer Fire Department. Um, so <laughs> weirdest situation it was it was after I had moved. My career took me uh, uh, out of out of Buffalo and. Um, <laughs> to the, not straight here, by the way, but either way. Yeah. Uh, so apparently a crazy accident happened. So I don't know all the details. And if I screw something up, uh, I, I un, sorry. unintentionally making a mistake, but there was some kind of accident where somebody drove into the fire hall. Now this was a huge, like six bay, big fire department, right? Mm -hmm, big mm -hmm. one, right? Mm -hmm. And they drove into it. Well, number one, that's fantastic when you get blown out for a fire call and it's at your fire hall. Mm -hmm, so that's mm -hmm. convenient. Right. Uh, but it caused so much damage that it, whether it was through insurance or, or or what, you know, fundraising with the boot, I don't know, maybe a combination of both, um, which that boot thing. Boy, talk about guilt me and all the loose oh, change in my car. Anytime, yes. anytime. Um, I never rolled out my window for anything as far as giving money out, except for that. The boot. And then if I don't have cash, I'm like, don't look. Just don't look yeah, at him. Don't, don't look, look at him. I, I just, I have to go. I have, yep. Or do you do the crying baby? You know, one of the, <laughs> and they're, like, they're like, there's Allie, no baby in the car, You man. don't have kids. Yeah, right. Exactly. Well, either way. So I don't know how they did it. This fire hall is because I, I I went back and saw it a few years back. Just happened to be in town. Mm -hmm. It is gorgeous. It's better than like a Marriott hotel. Sometimes, and we talked about this on the show. Those things are like a blessing in disguise. Yeah. When you get into an accident, and all of a sudden you get a nice new car, or didn't we talk about this? Was it a house or a store that somebody had crashed into, and all of a sudden you're you go, oh yes, I get a whole new sectional. I get a new dining table whatever wherever they hit mm -hmm. sometimes it's a blessing it, it happens it's a, an odd blessing but yes now uh, before we get in man we both came loaded to this thing so uh -huh. if this is since this is airing on july 4th week if you're traveling should keep you entertained for a little bit using a hand motion or body motion uh, what is your reaction to walking into a spider web <laughs> I was going to say, it's one of these. Is it not? Yes. <laughs> because For those you, of you who are listening, Scott just wiped his face a bunch. And, and Allie just threw her arms around like she was, you know, flailing the uh, spider web out of her way. Uh -huh. I saw this question and I'm like, doesn't everybody have almost the exact same reaction when you unexpectedly walk into a spider web? And it is always a <laughs> sound too when you're, you know, trying to wipe it off. And how is it you walk into one little street? strand of it and it's all over your body oh my god i know and then i have to shower afterwards i feel <laughs> yes. so gross you could be the most serious person in the world <laughs> it's terrible and you, you are never graceful through a spider web no. you're you're never like oh excuse me i just got a spider on me pardon one yeah. swipe across the brow no, it's, it's like, gone ah! <laughs> I know, totally now i'm excited because i'm going to take you on a tour of the amish er in a little bit the Amish what? The Amish ER, emergency room, oh, the Amish, Amish ER. ER. Every uh, once in a blue, Amish Amish talk pops up on this uh, podcast. Well, and you did go to the Amish auction a few weeks ago that I we did. talked about. And this, this all stems because 6059, you know, my significant other, uh, she works in, in the medical field where it's right in the heart of Amish country. And mm -hmm. honestly, it's their only real close medical provider. Mm -hmm. So she sees it all. And I feel like I'm really uh, not dancing a thin line with hip if I share some of these stories because, I mean, do the Amish get faxes of their medical records? Nah. So, oh, I never even thought about that. Nah. Okay, so what do they do? They print them off, hand them to them, I right? I know if they take a medical record anywhere with them. Maybe if they have to go up to a different hospital, the 6059 will print them for them And have, because I don't think the Amish printer is working all that quick. I want to know, <laughs> is there something that they can't do because of their religion or lifestyle? Because... Let's say, for instance, x-rays. Can they get an x-ray? Yes. Yes, they can. Okay. Yeah. And uh, some of the stories I'm going to tell you with the Amish ER will take you on a tour of, oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to go there now? Sure. Okay. We'll go there first. Okay. So, like I said, because my significant other uh, is, is in the heart of helping the Amish with their medical needs, I thought I'd take you on a tour of a couple things. And you're going to learn something here, too. And then I'm going to grand finale it with a what the hell was going on with this Amish item. Okay. So, 
I'll take you through some of the things that she has seen. Uh, there was the lady that, and this one, now now get ready. Th- this was a lady that had the horse spooked with the buggy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <gasps> oh, the, the buggy. No. She was thrown from the buggy. I knew you were going to say that. Now, listen, this is a tough group of people. If I'm thrown from a buggy, there's a really good chance there's an ambulance buggy coming up pretty quick. Do they have that? I, I don't know if they have the ambulance buggy, <laughs> but they definitely brought this woman in. Yeah? Her head was split <gasps> all the way down, all the skin. You could see the skull. Oh, now, my listen God. to how tough these people are. Oh, my God. They stitched her up and sent her on her way. They flapped what? it back over, stitched her up, and off she went they to make more butter. What, yeah, but, <laughs> didn't they want to check to make sure, like, you know when you have a concussion, or even if you have, uh, like, you thought you might have broken a bone, they'll say, oh, why don't you elevate your leg, or whatever the case may be. If you have some sort of hurt, hey, you need to, if you have a concussion, they'll say, stay awake for X amount of hours. Yeah. Didn't they want to go and examine and make sure that her brains weren't like oozing out of her head? I guess they just, you know, said stitch it up and we'll go from there. Oh uh, my God. I mean, yeah, it makes sense to say that. I mean, if it was anybody else, I'm thinking an overnight in the hospital might be the wisest move. Yes, to monitor nope. her. Yeah. And that was at her clinic. That wasn't <sighs> even like, let's go to the hospital and do this. Nope, stitched her right up there. And it was a big flapper. <sighs> like it was like a, you know, yeah, it was like do a guy's hear- toupee flopping off you want to hear something weird i love listening to like murder podcasts and things like that and when people describe certain things i'm completely okay with it i really don't love seeing blood my boyfriend and i've been watching a lot of house and there's been some bloody scenes and things like that every single time we both are like oh oh, yeah. oh gotta turn your head yeah yeah it's pretty rough. terrible yes uh now here's another one for you they okay. just recently had a gentleman come in and uh and i'm kind of I, i'm reading because i had a couple of these notes that were taken from me for me rather um <laughs> so my secretary something you may not know is the amish obviously don't personally use electricity right right but they can go into a building where electricity is being used oh, well sure and think about this you've heard of the amish taxi right you know that's where like if the amish have to go uh from let's say woodhall mm-hmm. new york to rochester or buffalo for a medical need or something else they can hire me they hire them and they take them you know where somebody it's amish uber yes i i've met an amish taxi guy <laughs> when i was going to have some work done by the amish so the guy came he because and he brought the the main guy the the um i guess project manager mr yoder yeah yeah mm-hmm. he was yeah he was amish and so he introduced himself and he's like hi i'm steve i'm I'm Jebediah's driver. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So they have that. Uh, so you can be around electricity. I also didn't know this one. Apparently, you're uh, at least in some of the sects, if you will, mm-hmm. of Amish. I'm not sure how that is described. Uh, you can use gas powered uh, tools, i.e. in this case, really? a weed whacker. Oh. <laughs> now we visit e- the Amish ER well, part two. Yeah, because in a, wait, hold on. I'm, I'm not done with that one. So I was thinking about their farms. I forgot that that's all literally horse powered. Oh yeah. Oh well, and ninety nine percent of it, I think they do it that way. But in this case, this Amish gentleman was using a gas powered weed whacker. Okay. When the the uh, uh, string broke and sliced the globe of his eye, that <gasps> arrived into oh. the, the Amish ER. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what? Something I don't see that often: Amish people wearing glasses. That's all I see is Amish people wearing glasses. Oh, I never see Amish people wearing glasses. Oh my gosh, glasses. at the Amish auction, if you didn't have glasses, you were on the outs. Are they like mine? Are they really wire-like? <laughs> They're not anywhere near as stylish as that. Well, maybe not stylish, but I would think like... Do you remember some... your dad, the way he had his glasses in the 1980s when you were on the Jesus tour bus? Yes, yes, tinted. Th- well, maybe not the tint, but think that style. Oh, Oh, those are so cute. No, no the, but these aren't. They're just, you know, <laughs> functional, indeed. Yes. Uh, you can uh, see everything. Everything. Yeah, yeah. But uh, in every pile of manure there is. Now, speaking of piles of manure. Yes. We're off the Amish ER. Is this the grand finale? This is the, what the hell was going on? So, 
I have mentioned to you that uh, uh, one little side hustle that that my significant other does. So on Wednesdays, the clinic's closed. Mm. Well, she can never just take a damn day and not do something. Right. So uh, she has this little side hustle. She cleans a town hall out in the rural uh, parts of, uh, of Amish country, just a small mm. little town hall. Mm-hmm. And um, on the days that I'm able to, I go, you know, and, and I help. I, I've, I've cleaned a toilet or, or seven in the past few months uh-huh. and uh i don't mind it. it you know it's something to do moves it along gets it along quicker right well, i had stepped outside i was taking the garbage out to the dumpster being a helpful guy you know yes uh, uh and um i look up and i hear this truck driving by and well it's carry it, it's got a trailer on the back i'm like all right no big deal and then i had to double take as it's driving by there was a buggy on the back and i'm thinking to myself did that amish buggy just get repoed <laughs> Like, is that a thing? I uh, that's the thinking, first thing that goes through my mind you, is, my God, a buggy's being repoed. Do you know what I thought it was? What did you think? I thought that maybe he bought a new buggy, and so they were delivering it. I never thought about that. I would have thought or, that that would have come, wouldn't that have come like, I mean, obviously you don't go to an Am- Amish buggy dealership, you know, where you have yeah, an Amish. where do you buy a buggy? <laughs> right? You don't have an Amish in a plaid coat sitting there going, hey, listen, let me give you a good interest rate if you Wait, buy now. Hold on a second. You know, uh, it's not like, you know, a Ford dealership where, you know, all the F-150s are out front, but then they have all the buggies out front. I'm pretty, I thought it was like a guy or a couple guys that made them for each community. And oh, I'm, there probably is. And, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. And then I'm thinking, you know, it it couldn't have been where the buggy's wheels stopped turning because, man, let me tell you, they're a knowledged bunch when it comes to repairs. Yeah. You know, I mean, these are the people that build chairs, barns in a day and everything else. <laughs> You'd think a buggy would be no thing. The only thing I could think of was the Amish buggy was being repoed. So I just Googled, where can you buy an Amish buggy? But do you want to know what comes up? <laughs> what? It's not like how we would have a car, like Scott's cars, car dealership. It gave me all things for what seems like touristy buggy rides. So it came up with oh. A is for Amish buggy rides. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron and Jessica's buggy rides. Very nice. Triple A buggy rides. Triple A. Uh-huh. Um, let's see. Abe's buggy ride. <laughs> yeah, there's Abe. Shady Lane Wagons. Ooh, oh, that's, that's that a... almost sounds like a Netflix show that's trying to take on Bridgerton. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's what we need. The Amish Bridgerton. We really did. Uh, didn't they have kind of something Amishton. like that? What? Uh, th- I thought that they had an Amish reality show, oh, well, which is different than an uh, Amish Bridgerton. No, there was the show. I swear there was a show. Maybe I'm wrong. Where they went through, uh, what do you call it again? Uh, Rumsfeld again? Uh, Rumspringer. Rumspringer. Yeah, that's right. Jerry Rumspringer. Uh, <laughs> Springer. It, Springer. Springer. Uh, so was, it, was it there? <laughs> a, Jerry Springer. Jerry Rumspringer. Springer. Wasn't there a show? <laughs> a shout out to Jerry. Rest in peace. Um, was <laughs> Shout there? out to Jerry Rumspringer. That's right. <laughs> um, where, where instead <laughs> of their bouncer, what was the bouncer's name on Springer? Was it Steve? Steve. Steve yeah. Instead of Steve, it's Abe. And he comes up in suspenders and he just sits you down. And yes. you're like, shit, oh. Abe just built a barn. <laughs> Speaking of suspenders, would you ever be a suspender guy? <laughs> no. Because no. my, the guy that works on my car... I think bow ties are cool, too, but I can't pull one off. No, you're not a bow tie guy. <laughs> no, Although, not. I could see you. I could see you becoming a bow tie guy. No. But my my guy that works on my With car... With my fireman beeper on my on my. No. <laughs> bow ties are so classy. Uh, yeah, well. You would have to... But you, that's, that's a lifestyle I think you have to embrace all the time. If you're going to start wearing bow ties... It's daily. You're right. You're now the bow tie guy. I, well, and that means even when the shirt's off in the bedroom. <laughs> so you look like Chris Farley on Saturday Night Live. Well, it's better or than Patrick Swayze. Yes. Well, you you let your mind wander where it wanders, but, but it's better than suspenders with no shirt Wait. on. Well, oh my god! <laughs> but my car guy, yeah. he started wearing suspenders, and he goes. This has changed my life, Allie. This is life changing. Yes. And he's like, I never pull up my pants anymore. <laughs> Honestly, they're adorable on him. He is like an older guy. So that, again, that's something you started. It, it kind of works. You're daily. You're <laughs> daily in the suspenders. You can't go to belt anymore. Oh. No, just throw the belts away. No. You're an all suspender guy. I'll let my pants drop. <laughs> I think that you're too small to be a suspender guy. I think that you either have to be a larger egg-shaped guy okay. 
or <laughs> you have to be really, really skinny and tall. Like your um oh, what was that movie with Jim Carrey? Like persnickety or something. Hold on. Oh, hold oh. On. but okay, you get what I'm saying. You yeah. look like Jim Carrey. Um Oh, what is it? It's a kid's movie, right? I don't know. Hold on. I'm going to look it up. Okay. Where am I going to go? Uh, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> oh, what was the name of that stupid movie? Doesn't it make you laugh, though, thinking about an Amish buggy being repoed? I mean, you just... That's oh, a- my God. <laughs> yes. Definitely. Because then, okay, when you when I get my car repoed, which it's been repoed before, when I've gotten my car repoed, I have to pay a healthy chunk of change to get it out. That's a lot of rhubarb pie to sell to get it out of the old, uh, yes, the, the lockup for the car. What do they have to pay to get it out? Or I, do they I have don't even to know. Do, I don't even know where they take it. Or do they have to do certain chores? Or do you have to give like 10 cans of uh, canned corn? You know, because they're always canning. And everything. insult to injury. Build the building they store the car in. I don't know. And also, I don't know if you've ever had... Your, have you ever had your car repoed no. in a big... Oh, oh, just the answer is no. No. Okay, I've had mine it, it done in a big city. And one of the things that's super common is that people break into it. Oh, in the mm-hmm. repo yard? Yes. I thought and, that they all had like angry dogs that run around there in no, repo yards. No. Oh. And uh, so the word is that it's either... <laughs> See the movies, they really fuck with you. <laughs> right? It's either that it's the person who is working there they're they're going through your car or oh that i figured right totally so if you're missing something you know what they always do we don't know anything about it yeah and you know that's why you don't be one of those classy ladies that hags a pair of panties from your mirror because you know (laughs) sal who's working the freaking office who's sitting there there speaking of suspenders no shirt and an egg-shaped guy Uh he's sitting in there yeah it'll be four hundred dollars to be able to go to your car (laughs) Then, you know, 30 minutes later, after it's 10 aisles over from where it was actually supposed to be, you find it ransacked, and you're driving out, you're like, excuse me, Sal, do you have my panties? No. And 10 minutes earlier, Sal was talking to Fred in the back. Fred, did you see the panties on that girl? Yeah. On that girl. Yeah, Fred's sniffing them. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all of the course, mind's eye right of now of course when my car got repoed in columbus i've always lived out of my car so you so could, likely there's panties in there right you could steal something you could steal i probably have like the encyclopedia britannica in my car you could steal it and i wouldn't even know it that's awesome is it <laughs> i guess i somebody had to clean my car out <sighs> Well, when you get it back and you thought it was detailed, they just cleared you out. <laughs> now, back to the Amish repossession. Oh, yes, yes. I need an update on this. Yeah, you actually Since asked me, I don't know how I'm going to fi- get an update. They drove by. No, no, no. Your your girlfriend works with the, the Amish a lot. Yeah. My question is, and this is what you need to find out, what do they have to pay or what do they have to do to get their buggies out of repossession, if that's what was going on? Hmm. You mm-hmm. need to find out, was the buggy getting repossessed? Repossessed? Repossess. You need to find that out and find out what is the fee. I'll uh, ask is, her to ask. Yeah. Is it is it duties or is it money? I don't know. I, I, I will I will ask. I'll put her to task. Oh, please do. And because quite a few come in and and see her, and we'll try to find out if there is really such a thing as an uh, Amish repo man. <laughs> right. Right. And is he also large and egg shaped? Because you never see a fat Amish guy. No, you rarely do. But you always see a fat repo guy. That's what I'm saying. So, so if yeah. you're an Amish repo, are you a fat Amish guy with suspenders? I no, don't. you couldn't be Amish if you're repoing it because he had a gas-powered truck. Oh, shoot. And, you're right. And a trailer on the back. So then, I mean, he took right off. Well, no, maybe you have, okay, maybe you've got 10 horses that are, if you can farm with a matter of a couple horses, you can repo another buggy. I, I, yeah, I guess. The horse thing is the thing that gets you because then you have to take their horse. Well, now that Do would you, be like horse thief. No. It's repossession. Oh, that's true. Repo and yeah. So if you owe me or you parked illegally in Amish country. Oh, how, and how do things go so bad? It's not like the economic system of the Amish is so complicated. It's either you bake me a rhubarb pie and I give you an Adirondack chair or I don't. Oh, see, like, I, <laughs> what do you do? Do I make, do I make a promise? I'm going to sell 48 Adirondack chairs this summer. And hand give pies. Give me a buggy. And then all of a sudden you only sold 
eight. I think you're wrong. And I, then you get your your carriage, uh, your your buggy repoed. I think that there's a lot of scandal in the Amish community. Oh, you you act like it's very very just simple. And no, I bet you Rebecca is sleeping with Joseph, <laughs> but she's married right now to to Jacob. That's possible too. I think that there's there's probably well, you know, they move around every few years uh, so that they don't have. And this is not a joke. That there's not like an inbreeding situation. Did you know that? No. Yeah. No, this as God is my witness. The Amish that are here today may not be here tomorrow because you know when it comes to oh yeah, this is a true thing. I was told, uh, and honestly, it's like I heard once. I <laughs> honestly thought that if you're like a Woodhall Amish person, that you were born and raised in that area, yeah, and no. then you always were going to be a Woodhullian. A lot of them move. A lot of them move around, and uh, and and that's to oh, I mean, keep the if you will keep the pool deep. How sucky is it that you have to move just so? You don't sleep with your sister cousin. Well, <laughs> rephrase that question before you say it again, because it really makes a lot of sense the way you just said. No, you, it don't does. Even need to, you don't even have to repeat it. That just made a lot of sense. I know what I oh, said. Oh, 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 oh. So back to the question you asked before we got pulled in all these different directions. I don't remember. What was my it question? Was, wasn't there a reality show about the Amish? Oh, yeah. The wasn't, answer is yes. Wasn't there a show? I think it was MTV. Didn't they? It was in the height of like all the, you know, uh, teen moms. And no, they didn't have a teen mom Amish version. It was called Breaking Amish, I believe. That's it. That's got to be it. Something like that. And they followed because, the people going through Jerry Rum Springer. Yes, because my uncle Mike. Sorry, Rum met, Springer. Yeah, here it is. My uncle Mike met, I think, Jeremiah. That I tracks. I think. Uh, well, here's the main characters. Oh, wait, this is Return to Amish. Oh, Return wow. to Amish reality series started in 2014, yep. seven seasons. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, from Puxatawney, Pennsylvania. Oh. Breaking Amish. Oh, it was called Breaking Amish. I'm sorry. Breaking Amish is an American reality television series on TLC and debuted in 2012. Wow. I, I just got two conflicting things. I have one thing says 2014, one says 2012. Oh, I'm sorry. It's 2012 through 2014. Okay, and they squeeze seven seasons into that, two years. That doesn't seem right. No, Some, something is not right. I mean, this is Wikipedia, so something There's something could the be math off. ain't math in here. Yeah, uh, it says uh, it has been reported that the relationships between cast members were portrayed falsely. Oh, and there were many inconsistencies between fact and the reality that was represented on the television program. And so it was a little more. Now, on that note, do you remember my big fat? Uh, uh oh god what was it um greek wedding no not greek wedding it was the uh wasn't it and, and now forgive me I, this might be a term that is not used anymore but at the time it was still okay to use it because they were talking about my big fat gypsy wedding do you remember that or oh, my, 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 yes i yes. do now that show <laughs> same show every single episode the most gaudy weddings you've ever seen uh -huh. and every single guy that was marrying into the families that were over the top always laid asphalt every single one was a tar paving guy <laughs> yes. or, or driveway paving guy yeah i'm serious every single guy in that that is so funny am i right no you're right All you're right. absolutely right i don't know how that's you know we went from the amish to that but you know a, a weird shows i guess okay the Amish thing. Now I'm going to clear this up. So it started as Breaking Amish. They came back as Return to Amish. Okay. That's, well, it makes fun, sense. They went on Jerry Rum Springer. Yes. And they even have Amish Mafia. <laughs> uh-huh. And what's that like? There was another. <laughs> I don't know. I, know. I mean, literally, you get a horse head in the bed with you. Literally. Uh, oh, my God. Amish Mafia led by Lebanon Levi. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. All right. What happened to the show Amish Mafia, you might ask? Yes, I'm wondering. The series' legitimacy was in question. Again. Oh, really? Throughout, really? throughout its four we seasons. We also don't talk about the Amish Mafia, just like the real mafia. It doesn't really True. exist. Yes, it does. Yeah. I bet you it does. I don't know. I, I've heard it doesn't. In some way. <laughs> you know what the Amish Mafia also does? I might be being sarcastic. Uses electric. Well, that's not going to work. Uh huh. I, no, I don't. I made that up. That was a oh, joke. All right. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I have to end with something <laughs> that I know there was miles more we could have gone, but here it is again. The Amish taking over the podcast. How is it they can't even listen to this? And this is another episode where they've taken over the podcast. Because 
it's such a secret society. Yeah. It really interests me. It makes me so we get, curious. We get little peeks inside, you know? Yes, yes, oh. yes. It's like so, the Illuminati, mm. but with 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 uh, with the and, uh, hair bonnets. And it's <laughs> like the mafia. I am curious about the and mafia. That doesn't exist. That's why The Sopranos was such a successful show. Yes. Because people are curious about it's the mafia. It's always been a curiosity, yes. Is the lifestyle really like what, you know, what mm-hmm. is portrayed? No, I, you're right. You're right. Uh, we have a friend. I would say a work acquaintance, if you will, that he claims that his family is in the mafia. <clears throat> I'm talking here in the Finger Lakes that there is. Yeah, that there's a mafia here. Yes. The ever so dangerous Finger Lakes mafia. <laughs> Jesus. I'm going to wine you to death. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, the wine part. Tracks, I'm going to get but... you drunk off Chianti. God almighty. <laughs> Although I never. I go do a hit on him, but I got to go on my boat on Seneca Lake for about three days first. <laughs> right, okay. Right. I need to get that a tan. Makes sense. By the way, since I've lived here for 18 years, I have not once drank Chianti in the Finger Lakes. Do we even have Chianti? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I don't so. know that that's a Finger Lakes... Uh, a special? A special. No, I don't think so either. Okay, last <laughs> the thing. Finger Lakes Mafia. I swear. <laughs> I swear. Okay, so last, <laughs> last, but certainly not least. So you ever go through your phone and look at old pictures just to like reminisce, like when the kids were younger... No? Um, yeah, um, not often. Sometimes I do. Uh, last time I went through was to try to delete as many pictures of an of an ex that I could. Okay, well, I, I don't want to reminisce. Oh well, <laughs> I know that I will go back and I will look at. It might be a period of time or a person I'm looking for because on your phone, on my phone, yours maybe not because your phone is old as dirt. Mm-hmm. Um, on my phone, I can go back in the pictures and I type a person's name or I can type dog and it'll show all the pictures of our dogs or. Oh, that's the, cool. Mm, yep. So you really get a new phone. I like these features. I was looking. That have been out for the past 10 years. Uh, totally. <laughs> I was looking for a picture of my old neighbor because it was her birthday. So I was going to post on social a happy birthday. But I typed in the years, like the years that I was living across the street from her. Yeah. So what came up was the year 2019. Also the same year that Zach and I started dating. So, same year the pandemic hit late in the year. No, the pandemic hit in 2020. Yeah, but remember, I remember being uh, in a store where a TV was on, and I'll never forget Lester Holt saying on NBC Nightly News, and we're monitoring an illness out of Wuhan, China. And uh, I, so it was late 2019 this started to take up. But I, that's not the point. Go ahead. Okay. So so in 2019, it, sh- it pulls up every picture from 2019. Well, that was the year that Zach and I started dating. So I go down memory lane and I go, oh my gosh, look at this. This is our first selfie together. And I, I pointed another picture out to him and I said, this was our first hike. Do you remember us hiking here at Mossy Bank and Bath? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, do, this was, um, I think this is our second day at the comedy show for Children's Miracle Network. I was there for that. Yes. So we were going through all these pictures. So I went back a little bit prior to Zach and there was, I took a selfie, a full body selfie, or not a selfie, I took a mirror shot of what I wore the day I was going on a date with Zach. Oh. And do you know what I had on that day? What? The largest camel toe. <laughs> <laughs> And now you know why the relationship blossomed. <laughs> so I said to him, oh my God, I never noticed this. Until... <laughs> uh, the old moose knuckle. <laughs> I, I never noticed this from this picture ever. So I said to him, did you know I had a camel toe? He's like, yeah, no. no yeah. He, he absolutely, he goes, Yeah. Yeah. I, I could see it plain as day. I'm like, I can't believe you went on a second date with me. After He's I like, had... what, what do you think got you the second date? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that ham sandwich. Exactly. <laughs> I said, I had the most raging camel, ch- ch- camel toe the, enti- the entire time. You he leave goes, it to Allie, leave nothing to the imagination. <laughs> he said, the entire time. Because <laughs> he said, you know, you walked up. And you know he goes, and, and that was a couple inches in front of you, <laughs> right? Right. So we we met at this coffee shop. They made it in the room before you did. <laughs> <laughs> we were meeting for coffee and muffins, puffy muffins. Yeah, speaking of muffins, yeah, <laughs> couple puffy ones. 
<laughs> best story ever. <laughs> this is what I love about you. The fact <laughs> you can just lay it out. Like you have no shame in it. You're like, here it was. And so he goes, you walked up and he goes, the first thing I thought was, oh my, this is really sweet. This is actually a really sweet part. He said, the first thing I said, I thought to my mind was, oh, she's just as pretty in person as she is in her pictures. And he goes, and she also has a camel toe. <laughs> oh, oh, you I don't know, know what to say. It's a lasting memory. That's Clearly. Sure. Have you, have and do you want to know what? It's so funny. So speaking of camel toes. Oh, yeah, while we're here. While we're here. So, of course, I don't ever want to have a camel toe, but sometimes it happens. So, I wear these one pants. I always get the most rager of a moose knuckle. And, <laughs> and, and it's a party in my pants, and everyone knows about it. And so, so I was over at my friend Christy and Alex's one day, and I was like, Alex, I am so sorry for my camel toe. I just pointed it out. <laughs> when you when you're apologizing and you have you thought of throwing the pants away instead no. of making apologies to people? They are my favorite workout pants. <laughs> I cannot. They're also your vagina's favorite pants. <laughs> <I know. laughs> we love them so much we just have to hug them real tight. <laughs> I got to go. I can't do anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Well, that was fun. Wasn't that fun? That was fun. Do us a favor, will you? Subscribe. Share the Scott and Alley Not For Air podcast. Touch our buttons. We know you want to.